I'm Amy Rowett, Professor in Integrative Biology and Physiology at UCLA. So the speakers were a wonderful contrast to each other. Christina started out talking about her approach to making dessert and creating dessert, which actually follows a very scientific method in setting out to create something that's innovative, create a dessert that's, uh, that's different than everything else you might find in a bakery in New York. Um, cereal milk, um, unfortunately, or fortunately for us, but unfortunately for the scientific process, was very simple to make. It was an idea that I thought was either going to be a really good idea or a really bad idea. <laughs> um, I literally toasted, took some cornflakes. I knew I wanted to toast them in the oven because I knew from working in restaurants that caramelizing, toasting in the oven, certain items really would enhance the flavor. I steeped them in milk. I strained them off, and then I seasoned them a little bit with a little light brown sugar and a little salt just to round out the edges to really sharpen that flavor, and it was pretty much a done deal. But a lot of the other things that we make at Milk Bar go through a much more vigorous um, question asking and testing process before we actually decide whether or not it's successful. Um, we make this pie called crack pie. Crack pie is sort of like the anti-pie in traditional baked goods terms. Crack pie is a mix of inspiration, gooey butter cake, which is a St. Louis dessert. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's gooey, buttery cake. It's a little underbaked in the center, so it's gooey and rich and seems incorrect, but oh so right. Um, it's a mix of this gooey butter cake and chess pie. P chess pie. Um, is the pie that you make when you don't have enough apples to make apple pie and you don't have enough rhubarb to make rhubarb pie and you don't have enough cherries to make cherry pie. You make the filling that you normally would for any of these pies, but you basically leave out all of the produce or the nuts. Um, and crack pie is our approach to pie. It very much embodies our approach to pie. We don't use a traditional American pie crust. One, because Everybody has, as, as everyone that um, was part of the competition or the question asking process today knows, everybody has a different point of view about pie crust. It's incredibly difficult to make. It's incredibly difficult to get just right. And everyone likes a different balance of fats to liquids to salts to the thickness that you should roll out the pie, to the design that you should crimp the pie crust, to the color that the end pie crust should be. Um, so all of our pie crusts at Milk Bar are made in a graham cracker crust style. So we take anything under the sun. For the crack pie, it's an oat cookie or an oatmeal cookie. We grind it down until it's a graham cracker crumb texture, and then we bind it with a fat. We typically use a European style unsalted butter because that's my preferred type of butter. Um, and then we season it with a little light brown sugar and a little salt. And every pie crust that we make at Milk Bar is using this same technique. It's not always using this oat cookie, but it's taking something that's dry, grinding it down into this dry, crumbly-like texture, binding it together with a fat that will enhance the overall flavor of the crust, and then seasoning it with a little salt and a little sugar. For me, pie crust, my, my take, my modern day approach on pie crust, if I'm not eating my aunt's apple pie, is that pie crust is an opportunity to surprise and wow and provide texture and flavor that is beyond perhaps your standard traditional American pie crust. It's not because I don't love standard traditional American pie crust, but it's because in order to sort of have a point of view and a perspective and a voice, for me, I needed a bakery that where pie crust would be this, not just a vehicle, but its own voice in a pie. Because I was raised by my grandmother and my mother, I, we very much have a waste not, want not mentality in our kitchen as well. I think that the constraints that you can create for yourself in the question asking process and in the uh, scientific and recipe testing process often breeds the most cre the utmost creativity because you're forced to take something that you see every day and look at it with a fresh perspective and fresh eyes. And that's one of my favorite parts of the approach to creating something new because you can bring anything into your kitchen to make something new with, but the things that you have the utmost attachment with are the most basic ingredients. And when you can make something new with the most basic ingredients that people have a relationship with or strike a chord with, that's when you really get a successful, innovative dessert. Um, a lot of what 
we like to do at Milk Bar in the creative process is take our favorite staple American baked goods and question them and look at them. Why do we take these apples and the cinnamon and the sugar and the salt and this lemon juice and toss them and just put them in this pie shell? Can I look at it differently? Can I do something with it? Why, why do we do these things? Um, I was raised to go to school and be a really good student and not to talk back to teachers and not to question them because they are the higher learning power. And I learned so much in doing that. The interesting thing was the second that I got out of school and I was able to have my own voice, I stepped back and I looked at everything that I was taught and listened to and followed without questioning, and I questioned it. And not in a disrespectful way, just in a, well, what, well, what if? Why and what if? And I think that that curiosity and that forcing yourself to question every single thing in the creative process is incredibly helpful. Um, you don't need a lot of tools. You don't need a lot of ingredients in your kitchen. You really just need that, that wandering spirit and the sort of courage to ask why. And then, of course, the, uh, the momentum and the patience to test through and be willing to fail, but also be excited when you succeed because it's an, even an equal balance of all of those things that, for me, make Milk Bar what it is. It makes our community and our culture and our sensibility what it is. And I think it's what makes a really good dessert and what has very much shaped what the food world is like now. So there you go. By contrast, Zoe Nathan came with a very traditionalist view of pie uh, that presented her very organic approach to making a pie that should be gooey, should be messy, it should not necessarily look very neat and tidy and pretty, but it should taste really, really good. Now, I am old school. I feel like, like an old lady up here with everything I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe a baker uses just a few ingredients. Um, and I believe that they know how to use them simply, and I, know, I believe that they know how to use them with respect. Um, I feel like a really good baker um, isn't bored of flour and isn't bored of sugar and isn't bored of salt and isn't bored of butter. Um, that they just know that through process they can make an entirely different thing every single day using five ingredients. Um, I also think that um, a baker, which is different from a pastry chef, has to make things that people crave every single day. It's different when you're a pastry chef. You get to make something that somebody's going to have once a week, once a month, once a year. I have to make something that you're going to want three to four times every single week so I can have a business, you know, and I can pay the people who work for me. Um, I feel like what people crave is donuts and croissants and, um, you know, chocolate cake and apple pie, you know? And that's, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, it's the things that you grow up in, grow up with, and it's, it's your comfort food, and it's the things that you feel comforted by. Um, and I, I, it is my job um, to make things that you crave. Um, I personally don't often crave like a white chocolate box filled with like pop rocks and like, you know, oozing some sort of like a foamy, I don't know, strawberry thing. Um, that's just not what I wake up craving. I generally want like a piece of bacon and maybe like a scone and like a latte. But, um, but I am boring and once again, I'm just telling you how I feel about this. Um, I believe oftentimes that it's harder actually to make something that looks simple on a plate. I think that it's, it's easier to kind of make a plate that's very ungepotched and you kind of lose what's happening inside. Um, but it's really hard if all you have on a cake is a piece of pie or a piece of tart or, you know what I mean? It better be good because that's all you have. You know, it's like walking in naked. You know, it's like, this is what you got, you know? You can't, you can gussy it up as much as you want, but it's like, boom, this is, this is it. Haven't been to the gym. I have a two and a half year old and this is what you get, you know? Um, but, uh, where am I? Um, I think that, um, the more I listened to what Christina was saying, it was funny, I was thinking about what I wrote, and, and I, I kept saying, a good baker, a good baker, a good baker, but a really good, I think a traditional baker, and I think that's what I am. I'm just kind of a very traditional baker. And I think that my job um, is to make really good apple pie, and um, is to show people that, or is to believe that people are not sick of apple pie, that you don't need to like kick it up a notch with like some rosemary and, 
you know, black pepper and cayenne pepper and, you know, <laughs> bacon fat and, you know what I mean? It's like, it's good. It's been around for an awfully long time for a reason, you know? And it's really good. You just have to make it very, very well. And I think that that is the hardest thing about making pie or making any of these things is that you actually have to make it well or don't make it. You know what I mean? It's fine. Come to my place. I'll make it for you. <laughs> you know? But, um... Pie is really, really, really simple, traditional pie. Um, I think it should be made with as few ingredients as possible. Um, I think pie is comforting. It's a thing that you want when you're cold. So for me, when uh, I had to come here and talk about pie, I feel like pie is always a, fr a pie is a fruit pie. Um, all other pies to me are glorified tarts. Um, so I'm sorry, but it's just true. It's just maybe a little too high or something. But um, pie is a fruit pie. You know, it should be uh, an amazing, beautiful crust, a buttery crust that's just a wrapped around um, nice, lovely, soft fruit. Um, okay, so crust should be, is, always should be. Uh, butter, flour, sugar, salt, leavening, maybe if you feel like it. I use a little leavening in mine, and water. Um, I appreciate all the experimentation, but that's it. I just told you, you're done. No experience necessary. That's the pie crust. That's it. Um, you have to use really good butter. Um, pie is supposed to taste like butter, so obviously you're going to use good butter. Um, to make a really good pie, it's expensive. To make a really good pie, it really shouldn't be cheap. And frankly, you shouldn't eat pie every day, so that's good. So you should probably make like a little, I don't know, a little coffee jar by your room, you know, in your room, and that drop your quarters in and save it for the pie. Because, you know, in once a month, make yourself a really rad pie. Because it shouldn't be cheap. Uh, so get really good butter. Treat yourself right. Good European-style butter. Uh, in terms of flour, I always use AP flour, like you were saying. Um, I don't use pastry flour because I think it's annoying. Um, I think it's annoying to have to um, sift it. Uh, anybody who works in my kitchen knows that anything that's annoying, I don't do. Um, I find it annoying. And that's, that's the most awesome thing about being in charge, is that just one day you're like, I don't have to do annoying things, that's awesome. So we, generally speaking, don't use pastry flour. Uh, every once in a while we do. Um, shortening, don't use it. It's disgusting and it tastes bad. Um, just don't do it. Um, and then sugar, you should never have your pie crust taste like sugar. Um, you don't want it to compete with your fruit. You always, but you do want a little, little, little bit. I'm talking like two teaspoons. That's it. That's the max. Um, you want it to just round things out. You don't want it to taste like sugar. Um, and then the most important ingredient in baking, um, in life, in anything, is salt. Um, write this down, make a shirt, <laughs> tattoo it on your body. I mean, if there's anything that I could bring the world, it is use salt in your crust, please. Um, I think it is so overlooked. I think it is so disrespected. I just think it's so sad. Um, so I will say, if you buy a pastry book um, and there's no salt, Salt in most of those recipes, throw it out, it's crap. Um, because no good pastry chef does not have salt, you know? I've seen her book, she has salt all in everything, you know? And like, you know, salt, 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 you need it. Um, and I will say that nine times out of ten, if you see another recipe and it does have salt, you're most probably gonna have to double it. You know, people just don't put enough salt. Um, salt is not a flavor, you know? Yeah, every once in a while, you know, I make a maple bacon biscuit and it's supposed to taste salty and I put salt on top of it or salted caramels and, you know, but generally speaking, salt is not gonna be a flavor. It's supposed to be a flavor enhancer. It's gonna make your food taste like something. Um, it's gonna make your crust not taste like a floury mess. It's gonna make it pop. You're gonna taste the butter. You're gonna taste the crust. You're gonna taste, you know, you're gonna taste and I think that um, salt is just the most underutilized ingredient in baking. And I think that it just bums me out so much. Uh, okay, so filling, filling. So to me, like I've said, filling in a pie is, a f is fruit. Um, so I think never use frozen fruit. 
please. Um, it's watery and it's gross and there's no point. And like I said, making a pie should be expensive. It should be an experience. It should be an afternoon. You know, I almost believe pie shouldn't even be eaten for dessert. It should be, it's an experience, you know. I mean, Mother's Day, all I did, I made a pie and we had our family over at five in the afternoon and we ate pie and then they went away. You know what I mean? And it was like, awesome. You know what I mean? And 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 that's it, you know? And, and, and you've had a moment and it's amazing and, you know, and, and so it's pie. It should be, you know, it's a party. But um, so I will say that when making a filling, I think that the most important thing and I think the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes that people do is they follow a recipe. Um, never follow a recipe when you're making the filling for a fruit pie. Taste your fruit, see how it is, and always add your sugar and always add it with your hand. Don't add it with a cup measure. Don't add it with a tablespoon. Don't add it. Add it with your hand. Mix it with your hand and keep tasting it. When it starts to taste sweet enough, you know, you add your big pinch of salt and then you add your little bit of cornstarch or your little bit of flour, whatever you want, and add as you're adding, don't think about what you want it to look like. And then you put it in your, put it in your pie shell. Um, so now is the most important part of baking a pie. And the thing that my second biggest pet peeve in a bakery or as a baker is um, how people bake. Um, they forget that this is also an ingredient. Um, so uh, color is flavor. Without it, you don't have flavor. Um, it just doesn't work, you know. It, color and baking time and how your pie looks needs to be treated as another ingredient. It's just as important as salt, sugar, flour, anything. If you forget your color, you didn't make the thing. I mean, it's done. It's not, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like you don't have chocolate for your chocolate chip cookies. It's not done. Don't make it. Forget it. Um, if you don't feel slightly nervous towards the end of baking a pie, you didn't do it right. Um, you have to give it color, you know? And honestly, if you're not a baker and you don't do it by trade and you don't really know, buy one of those glass Pyrex dishes so you can lift it up and see the bottom and make sure that it's brown. You know, there's nothing worse than a perfect pie with a blonde bottom. It's just the worst, the worst, the worst. Um, and I guess one of my last things I would like to say um, is that I would hope um, that people, that bakers would start to bake with a little bit more balls um, and courage. You know, um, uh, I would wish for everybody to throw away their timers and to start to engage all of their senses. You know, smell, is it done? Look at it, is it ready? You know, what's my intuition saying? You know, I oftentimes feel like people, oh, 50 minutes, it's done. You know what I mean? Well, it said it was supposed to be done. Well, it's not done put it back, you know, like follow your heart. You know, this is something that you're making. You know, the whole thing about baking is that it makes you be present. You know, that's why we do it. You know, it's, 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 it's a meditation, you know, um, or at least for me, that's why I'm a baker. I bake because I'm the most impatient, you know, scatterbrained human being on the face of the planet. But when I get to work or if I'm in my kitchen, that's where I am. And that's all I am. And, um, it's the best, and that's the only reason that you do bake. I mean, yeah, pie is great, but to me, it's process, you know? It's the process that's the best part. I would make pie all day, and I wouldn't even have to take a bite, and I'd be happy as happy.